Hi there, it's Benji80 here on Benji80 England. The Walking Dead, the world beyond, it is utter garbage. Now, let's get the character names out of the way, straight away. Iris, Hope, Silas, Elton, Felix and Huck. Now, I will give <coughs> respect to uh, Annette Mahendru that plays Huck. Um, she does a good job and Huck's my favourite character in the show. But The Walking Dead, the world beyond is an utter travesty it's um i have a video called fear the walking dead is pathetic well the walking dead the world beyond is even worse now as always uh there will be no clips in my video and i will save the rating out of 10 until the end you can probably guess what it's going to be but i won't let you know until the end and also go and watch my uh, fear the walking dead is pathetic video it's proved relatively popular considering the amount of competition in this in the space um, and it's very good and it's, you know the feedback I've got has been good um, and it is a good video I actually just re-watched it in preparation for this and I thought to myself well my channel is coming up <clears throat> on Thursday <coughs> Thursday the 4th of April on its second birthday and I'd like to make some uh, special videos uh, and this is a, a subject I've been thinking about talking about um, and I'm going to do it um, and I'm going to do it right here I won't go on like I did on my Fear the Walking Dead uh, video because this doesn't warrant it um so there are six main characters essentially and a supposed bad guy although she uh, anyway um it's just a terrible show it's i'll call it the forgotten spin-off it was the first spin-off after fear the walking dead fear the walking dead was a spin-off of the walking i'm not going to give you the whole context of the show if you're watching this you don't need me to explain it to you i'm not about to sit here and give you context and go on for hours and make a video essay about it, alright, you're watching this because you know the subject, alright, so you don't need me to explain it to you, um, but The Walking Dead, The World Beyond, aired for two, se two seasons, two seasons of ten episodes, uh, 2020 and 2021, I watched them both, so the one in 2020 aired, still during when we were all, uh, had to stay locked in our houses here in England, so it was something to watch, and I have watched the Walking Dead show since the start until the end of season 11, no, the end of season 8 of Fear the Walking Dead, and that, that's me out. And I have a full on run on my uh, Fear the Walking Dead is Pathetic video. I highly recommend you go and check that out and go and check out all my older content. Um, so, this show is basically, uh, to quote my IMDb review, um, I did used to leave reviews, not video reviews, as far as I know, you can't do that on IMDb, but written reviews. It's a cringeworthy young adult power fantasy, and it's utterly pathetic. And I quote, and I quote myself, and I was spot on then, back in 2021, and I'm still spot on now. <clears throat> Good for me. Um, it is utterly pathetic. It's for young people leave a compound 12 years into the apocalypse. Again, you don't need context. You don't need me, need me to explain this. If you, oh, and as I said, there'll be spoilers. Um, if you've watched these shows you know what i'm talking about so four young people who have never been outside into that world 12 years into it 12 years into it 12 years into um you know uh, sanctuary with negan um uh, then later the whisperers the reapers at this point and looking at these four young people you've got a very overweight young woman i'll be real about it and the actress that plays her does a lot of blank staring into the camera. I'm not the only one to have noticed that. There, there are a lot of blank stares. Um, she's not exactly the best actress I've ever seen. And I'm, yeah, she's not. Um, uh, her adopted sister, who looks like she might be able to handle herself, but she's on her own. They don't seem to be carrying any effective uh, weapons to fend off the zombies, uh, walkers. Biters, call them whatever you want. I'll just call them zombies. Um, then you have uh, Silas and Elton. Silas is an overweight, looks like the type that might. Uh, well, anyway, and, and actually, <laughs> he's the type you think he might be. I'll leave it at that. And um, uh, as in, not a very good person. And Elton, who, although he's an intelligent, uh, quite compelling character, played very well, can't remember the name of the actor, um, is built like Peter Pan. Okay, and he's wearing a corduroy suit out into the apocalypse. It's utterly ridiculous. <clears throat> Within minutes of leaving the compound, uh, there's a zombie impaled in a ditch. Somehow Iris, the leader of our group, slips down into the 
hit with the zombie into the trench, nearly gets herself killed. It's utterly ridiculous. It's utterly ridiculous from the start. How would these four survive? Twelve years at this point, right? They've been inside a compound. They've never encountered, in the wild at least. Um, they've done training, but it's all on paper. They're out in the wild. They, they wouldn't last ten minutes, and yet some, they wouldn't literally wouldn't last ten minutes because they almost don't. What, what in that group of four says that any of them would survive? Well, they wouldn't. And yet somehow, again, I'm going to keep this short, they, they survive a trek across the country, a trek during which Iris, our, our heroine, our girl boss, somehow puts on weight. Um, uh, well, how? What's she eating? Um, I, it's not explained. Of course it's not explained. But how is she putting on weight? Is she eating zombies? <laughs> That's a joke, by the way. You know, it's it's an absurd comment. It's meant to be absurd because the show's absurd. It's not just absurd. It's absolute fucking nonsense. It's ridiculous. How would they survive? How would they survive? The, the, the two adult characters that are basically saving their asses are Felix and Hutt, but they can only do so much. And they realise, long after they've left, that they've left. By the time Felix and Huck go after them, they'd already be dead. Or, or the two female characters would have been slung over the shoulders of some marauding nefarious blokes that want them for their own sinister uh, wants and desires because and i addressed this in the fear the walking dead video this is never addressed in my uh, fear the walking dead is pathetic video i addressed this this is never addressed in any of the walking dead shows at that point in the apocalypse the most ruthless people would have survived and and lone women or lone or women with two blokes that clearly can't do anything to stop it would be prey to these types and this is just a fact go and read the stand by stephen king as flawed as it is it tackles this in a much more uh, at least believable way it, it, even the, no, i'm not going to review the um, the mini series that came out at the start i think it was 2021 or 2022 i have watched it i've got it on dvd at least it tackles it in a more realistic uh, more believable way than this, this is ridiculous, for utterly clueless, literally clueless, with no experience of this environment, enter this environment, and somehow win, which is why I, 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 it's, a, it's an attempt to take um, The Walking Dead, which is a first, the first five series, of the six series of The Walking Dead, even all of them really, even though a lot of the series of The Walking Dead, the main show, were terrible. It at least shows the ruthlessness of the type of people that would survive. Even Rick Grimes himself becomes an absolute ruthless bastard by season five. He becomes Shane, essentially, who was my favourite character, and Andrea was my second favourite character. Of course, they both get killed off. I said there'd be spoilers in this, or at least I think I did. And if you're watching this, um, I'm sure you've seen the main show, and I'll say now, there are spoilers in this. I'm not holding back here. Um... That's what it would take. How would these four survive? But because it's aimed at young adults and their massively overblown egos, and as particularly this generation of them, which I have tackled on my channel, the narcissism of them, they would not survive. They would not survive one day and one night in this environment. I said 10 minutes. Let's say, I'll say, let's say they got lucky enough to make it to the first night outside of the compound. They might not be waking up the next day. Um, it, it, they, they would not survive a trek across the country. They, they've done, like, on paper they've trained, but they've not been in that environment. And nothing could prepare anyone for that environment. We're talking, to, I'm talking 12 years in to the apocalypse, where it's degenerated to the point where you've got, in the main show, whisperers, right? And then reapers in the, the first part of, um, the final season, season 11. I mean, these are ruthless motherfuckers. This lot would not survive. It is utterly ridiculous. It is just clear pandering. It's pandering to the narcissism and egotism of this in particular generation of young people that think they are perfect and they know better. They know better. They can save the world. Well, and it, that's essentially what this show is doing. It's taking four of those and putting them into a do or die scenario. Well, they wouldn't be doing, they'd be doing the other, all right? That is a fact, right? It, they're not equipped for it. They're not equipped to survive in that environment for 10 or 12, 12 years, over a decade. 
it would make people hard. And, and we're talking adults, right? Hard, ruthless adults. Not all evil, not all bad. Which is why I think that the main show, The Walking Dead, and Fear the Walking Dead, falls down. Because there are too many soft characters that have survived. How have they survived that long? How are there people that are deaf? I, I, this might, well, will offend people, me saying this, but... How are there people that are massively overweight? How are there people in wheelchairs? Those people would be the first ones to go. They would. It's a matter of fact. If you're going to do a, an apocalypse story, do it correctly. Right? Do it correctly. Don't pander to, to having to be, you know, include everyone. It just completely destroys the believability of it. It ruins it, in my opinion. I, I don't give a shit if it's... If, includes everyone, all right, because it just ruins any credibility, it tears it all down, all right, this is an apocalypse drama, this is an apocalypse show, and then you try and shoehorn in some ridiculous young adult nonsense, where they're all going to come out on top and all be the heroes, how, how, they wouldn't survive, they survive by pure luck, you've got blank stare overweight Iris in the lead role, you've got hope that, although she seems of the four the only one that might be formidable enough to maybe, maybe survive if she was surrounded by other survivors, people who know how to survive, but she's got, um, she's distracted by certain issues that would probably be her downfall, or most definitely be her downfall. If she was surrounded by the right people, maybe. The other two, Silas, no, he's just a villain in waiting, they don't make him into a villain, of course they don't. And Elton, uh, as interesting and thoughtful and intelligent as he is, he, he's not built for that. Like uh, Shane says to Rick in uh, season two of The Walking Dead, um, you're not built for this world. And, and that definitely applies to them. And that's Shane saying that to Rick. Rick Grimes, who essentially is built for that world compared to those four years. This is what I mean. I'm coming into all sorts here. This is actually a pretty good video. I, I did a previous version of this. I messed it up. So I, this is a much better version I'm doing here because I'm touching on all sorts of things here. Um... Uh, yeah, but they're not built for it. They're not cut out for it. But because it's a young adult power fantasy, of course they are. It's just nonsense. They've shoehorned absolute bollocks into a show that, although fell apart quite quickly, um, and Fear the Walking Dead fell apart even more quickly, and again, soft characters in that wouldn't survive. Um, lots of them. There are hard characters in that too, but then there are hard characters that act soft. I'm not going to talk about Fear of Walking Dead anymore. I've already covered that extensively. Um, but they, they just wouldn't survive, and somehow they do. And again, as as because it's a young adult power fantasy, none of them die. I said they'd be split. None of them die. The only character that dies is my favourite character, Huck. Of course she does. She's the only one that's even close to being a Shane-type character. She's not on that level. The actress does her best with a thankless part. She does her best. She's charismatic. It's easy on the eye, in my opinion, as a bonus, that's besides the point. But um, she does her best with the part, and of course she dies. But again, my two favourite characters in the main show, Shane and Andrea, well, within one season of each other, they both died too. And at that point, I started losing interest, although, and I did leave, stop watching it halfway through season five, but I came back before the end. I thought season six was quite good of the main show. I've already talked about that in uh, Fear the Walking Dead is Pathetic, but I also discussed the main show, The Walking Dead. I don't have a separate video on that. I've covered it enough in this one and the, the Fear the Walking Dead is Pathetic video. Um, th these four wouldn't survive. It's utterly ridiculous. And this just feeds into this this nonsense, this, this invincibility mindset that they have. That, that you, know, you can do anything if you set your mind to it, in including walking out into a 12-year apocalypse scenario with no experience of it and trek across the country while the main lead puts on weight, which is just utterly ridiculous. Two of them are overweight, straight away that's an issue. One of them looks like Peter Pan, the other one, although she might survive given the right set of circumstances, she's massively distracted by her own issues and there's no one around her that is competent, let alone formidable. It's, it's, it's an utterly ridiculous show, it's utterly pathetic, which is why I'm glad, spoiler for my Fear the Walking Dead is Pathetic video, I give it a 2 out of 10 at the end because it allows me to give this a 1 out of 10. This is a 1 out of 10 show. It is, has no redeeming features, Huck can't save it. Huck makes it semi-interesting, uh, the Felix character could have been interesting, but that he gets sidetracked with a, with a romance plot. I don't give a fuck about romance, right, in this type of scenario, particularly if you've only got 20 episodes to tell the story, 
Fuck your romance. Fuck your soap opera. It's utter bollocks. It's ridiculous. It's melodrama. You know, fucking... Uh, it's a terrible show. It's a terrible, irredeemable show. Irredeemable show. No wonder it's the forgotten spin-off. No wonder, no wonder none of these characters, even though nearly all of them survived, ever crop up in any of the other shows. Because they're all shit. And, and for the most part, the actors and actresses did a terrible, terrible job with it. They get handed the opportunity of a lifetime and they blow it. Was it because they could do no wrong? Was it because staring off blankly into space is now acting? Well, I don't know. Maybe she's on a lot of uh, medication, you know, because a lot of the young people are now. So maybe it's supposed to be relatable. She's just staring off into space. Yeah, that, that'll work. Just stare the zombies out. That'll definitely work. Are you lumber away from them at two miles an hour? Yeah, definitely. What a what a what a fantastic show! What a what an amazing show! Uh, it, it, you know, if if you th if you thought The Walking Dead ended up terrible, and if you thought Fear the Walking Dead was appalling, well, The Walking Dead: The World Beyond it tops both of them. It is utterly irredeemably fucking appalling, and anyone that thinks it's good, don't trust their opinion on anything. Right? It's it's a terrible show. It's a terrible terrible show. It's a travesty, and it's. One of the nails in the coffin of the entire franchise. Why make it a franchise? Why couldn't it just be one show? Well, maybe one show with Fear the Walking Dead, which has now run its course and should have run its course years ago, because it was never that good to begin with, as I've already discussed. There, there were no characters in that that match any of the anywhere near the best characters of the main show. You look at the main show, Rick. He's not my favourite character. I call him Dudley Do Right. Shane, Andrea, the Governor. Uh, Negan, Daryl, he's not a personal favourite of mine, he's certainly a compelling character, even Carol, Morgan in that show was good, in Fear the Walking Dead he became pussified, of course he did, because that's a pussified show, um, but it just look, that's just some of the characters, uh, even um, is it Alpha of the Whisperers, so many compelling, memorable characters, I can name them, I'm struggling to name any of the characters in the Walking Dead, the world beyond, because they're all shit, and the actors and the actors and actresses do not even come close to making them compelling. It's a it's a photocopy of a photocopy. It's a weak imitation. It's pathetic. The world, Walking Dead, the world beyond, deserve to fail. Anyone that likes it has terrible taste. Anyway, if you like the video, hit that like button and give it a thumbs up. If you know someone you think might get something from it, share it with them. Uh, go and watch all my older content. Subscribe when you do ring the notification bell and feel uh, free to leave a comment if it's respectful. I reply if it isn't, I won't. This is Benji 80 from Benji 80 England. I'll see you next time.